So should you be a real estate agent? Man, that's like, that's seriously a question I probably get about four times a week. At least three times a week I get this question. And my answer is usually, well, it always is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he should be. I mean, for most people, the answer is no. But for some people, yes, absolutely. It could be a fantastic career for you. And we're going to talk about the reasons why in this video. And if you're wondering if this is a career that you should or maybe should not enter, well, stick around because we're going to talk all about it. See, my name is Chris Cusimano. I have been in real estate since I was 19 years old. I'm 41. I'm not saying that to date myself. I think the crows speak and can speak to that. But I am sharing that because I've been in the business for a very long time. And a lot of people who are given advice that we're, we're seeing on different platforms, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, are only in the business for three, four, maybe five years. And if we're being honest, that's just not really enough time to talk about whether you should start a career in something or not, especially in the last few years, because in the last few years, there weren't as many challenges in the real estate industry as there usually are. So it, it might be possible that you have seen people, maybe influencers or possibly friends or family members on social media talking about their successes and you're looking at that, uh, whether it's um, a jealousy or maybe it is a curiosity whether you can do the same thing. And then now you want to explore entering the industry. But the thing is, I'm going to say, if this is the reason why you're doing it, then we probably need to have a deeper conversation of your real motivations of considering becoming a real estate agent. By the way, my information is in the description. If you ever want to have that chat, shoot me an email or a text and I'd love to chat with you about it. No problem at all, as long as I'm not tied up with another project at the time. Okay, why did I say earlier that this is probably not the business for most people? Well, because it's hard. And I don't say that, the numbers say that. 87% of the people who get their real estate license are out of the industry by their fifth year. Now. For some people, that is all they need to know to not enter the industry. If that is you, then that's fine, it's okay. But for the people who are successful in real estate, they see that as welcoming. Something that is hard is extremely welcoming for the successful. The reason why is because they see the opportunity. There's opportunity in the difficulty of a situation. Let's say if something were easy to obtain, then everyone would, would obtain it. Then there'll be no value because everyone can do it. No one's impressed with something that everyone can do. People are impressed with people like LeBron James because not too many people can do what LeBron James does. If everyone could, it wouldn't be impressive and he wouldn't get paid the way he gets paid. That's kind of a good analogy we can talk about when it comes to being a real estate agent. If it were easy and everyone could be great at it, then there wouldn't be any money in it because everyone would be fighting for more and more business. There's only a certain amount of business out there and the best of the best are the people who go out and earn that business. Furthermore, the average income for a real estate agent in the first two years is $8,500 a year. $8,500. That's hardly enough money for people to want to move forward in the industry or hardly enough for what they thought they were going to earn when they thought about exploring this new career path. And why do they earn so little? Well, again, because it is hard. The business itself is not all that hard. It's A, knowing what to do in the business and B, having the consistency to time and time again to implement those plans to do those things. For example, a good example you can, you can utilize is going to the gym. You go to the gym and you work out and the next day you look in the mirror and nothing happened. The next day you go to the gym and you diet again and you go to look in the mirror and nothing happens. And the, the changes are so gradual, same with aging. The changes are so gradual that over time you don't really notice it. But if, but if you look back six months prior and you look at today, you go, oh my God, I did something. I did something. And it's really hard for people to not get the instant results that we have so been accustomed to in this industry. In real estate, you understand people are hiring you for the biggest transaction of their lives. And they're, for the most part, people choose wisely in this. They do a little research. They wanna make sure that the person who is hiring them is the best person for the job. So if you're not consistently working on your craft, getting better at it, then it's gonna be a lot harder to have people put their faith and trust into you. And then since you have less and less business coming in, you're not going to gain experiences of doing the job. And without experience, you have less confidence. And with less confidence, you have less desire to go out and market who you are as a real estate professional because you might be scared of what would happen when someone actually said yes. And that brings us to number two. Number two, people attempt to become a real estate agent due to the extremely low barriers of entry. You can essentially go to school for a week and get your real estate license and go out there and 
pay a thousand bucks or so to the local board, get some business card and announce that you're a real estate agent. It doesn't take all that long and it's not that expensive. It's one of the most affordable businesses to start. So that's why a lot of people enter it. And a lot of times from being a coach and trainer and a team leader, I have noticed that a lot of people who enter the industry are simply burnt out of the other careers. And that's where the problem number two comes into play. What kind of mindset do you have? Have you had a job your whole life where you simply had to clock in and clock out? and your tasks were laid out for you for that particular part of that business and you got a paycheck no matter what? Did you, you never had to really worry about all the aspects of growing the business or the other parts of the business? Let's do an example of teachers. So th let's say teachers go out and uh, their jobs are to create lesson plans and teach to their students. They come in at a certain time, they leave at a certain time. I'm sure there's more to it. I'm just keeping it simple here for the video. There's more to that business, if you will, or that school process uh, than just that. They're the janitors. They don't have to worry about cleaning anything up. There's the, the kitchen staff, there's the principal, there's the admin, there, the resource officers, you get it. There's multiple people within that business. And if you had a job mentality, you only did a specific job to make that business go. I understand that schools aren't businesses per se. It was just an example to give you an idea. You can do that with any business. So with real estate, when you enter it, if you're entering it for the most part as a new agent, you're typically gonna be a solo business agent to start, meaning you're juggling all aspects of the business yourself. Side note, the reason I'm with Keller Williams Realty is because they teach you how to either be on a team or run a team so you run it as a business. But for the most part, most people who enter real estate are solo agents or solo business people juggling all the same things at the same time. And that's really hard for people to grasp, that they're doing all these things to build a business. And by the way, you may not get paid for six months. You may not get paid for a year. Or if you're the average agent, you only get paid $8,500 a year your first two years. That's a lot for people to swallow and people weren't expecting, so oftentimes they quit. People who also come from the employee mindset of life and go into a business role or business owner role are not used to not having steady income and they're not used to having to divvy out cash out of their pocket to market themselves. That's a new thing for them. I had an agent on my team a while ago that came from another career and she was shocked by all the costs, the monthly costs, associated with being a real estate agent. Some things like buying business cards, right? They, a lot of people just don't even put that into the account when they're becoming a real estate agent. And if you're not aware of that, well, you're watching a good video to make you aware of that. But if you're not aware of that and you enter it, then that might be a, a big detriment for you to move forward. Just the unexpected differences from being a business owner than what you were before as an employee. Now with that, I thought it was a good idea to maybe talk about the three phases of businesses or running a business, just in case you may decide to get into the real estate business or any other business for that matter. And I'm, I talk about more in depthly inside of my training. It's at suitupagents.com. We dive really deep into all this, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna give you a quick cliff note version. Phase one, I like to call the invitation phase. I realized that it was really best for me and my business and my mental sanity to look at my business as an invitation to a party. And phase one is the invitation. In other words, it's your prospecting and marketing to procure the business, to get that phone to ring. Phase two is the RSVP people call and then your job is to at that point, you don't have the business yet, is to convince them or talk to them into hiring you whether to represent them as their agent to buy or sell a property. That's the RSVP phase. That comes with knowing your business, having the confidence in your demeanor and knowing your craft to give them the confidence to want to hire you. That's a phase, you need to learn that. Phase three is the actual job, the actual work of the job. So I guess you can look at phase one as the invitations, phase two as the RSVP, getting people to the party. But what happens when they get to the party and this party is not what they expected or what they expected to get out of the real estate agent wasn't something that you're actually providing. That's phase three. You actually have to deliver the goods. You might get that deal then. By the way, if you're thinking of it as deals, you're probably not going to do well, but you're probably going to get that closing then, but that person may not hire you again or tell everyone about you or they'll be disappointed in you. So it's very important that you work on these three phases of your business whenever you're not actually out doing the business. And that's another side note. There's working on the business and working in the business, and you're going to have to do both of those things when you're a real estate agent. What does that mean? Well, working on the business are those things I mentioned that before. What is your invitation? How are you gonna market to people? How are you gonna lead gen? What are you gonna say when people call you? Do you understand how to use the multiple listing system? Do you understand st stats, graphs, and data? Do you know how to have a conversation about which neighborhood is where and what might be best for them? What's gonna happen with the interest rates according to experts' opinions? And then the third thing is the job. How do you actually do the job? How do you actually show houses the best way? A lot of real estate agents, fine, just get a stack of paper and they go in the car. 
but that's not the best way. There's better ways of doing it. But do you have better ways? We talk about that in our training also. But that's something to consider. There's three different phases and working in the business and on the business. You may not have thought of that. Number three is essential. It's more of a mindset thing. And I can probably say this is one of the most important things if you think about being a real estate agent is having a thick skin or a thin skin. If you have a thin skin, meaning you're sensitive, over emotional, uh, you react before thinking, uh, you're not really someone perceives as a, a cool, calm, intelligent, experienced voice, a shoulder that they can lean on. This might not work out very well for you in the long term. I can't tell you how often I am in the other side of a negotiation with a real estate agent and their emotion is just flooding out of them. And they're not making really strong, smart decisions for their client. They're reacting without thinking. They're not thinking situations through and they're becoming victims. And then at the same time, they're probably relaying that energy onto their clients and it probably is all for not. It's a reflection of who they are, not necessarily a reflection of the situation at hand. I see it, gosh, I see it so much time and time again when I talk to real estate agents and it doesn't matter if they're on top high-end agents or newer agents, is that the mental game of dealing with all of the emotions involved in a real estate transaction, whether you're on the real estate side or the client side, is very overwhelming. A lot of that has to do with real estate agents having what's called commission breath. Commission breath is where a real estate agent cares more about the commission than they do about their client's well being and as an experienced real estate agent we can see those a mile away we know when another real estate agent's putting their commission ahead of the needs of their clients and that works in our clients favors in negotiations so if you don't have a thick skin and you can't control your emotions and be a really calm soothing voice in any transaction no matter what with your clients and with other agents people are going to see it and they're going to take advantage of it and if you're a real estate agent that's going to hurt your clients it's going to put them into a detriment not only that the mental game is extremely challenging because because you have to be extremely consistent time and time and time again on those three phases that we mentioned earlier. The invitation, the marketing of how your image is going to be. We walk you through that in the training of how you should do that, by the way. Two, and then the RSVP. Uh, what conversations and how do you lead those conversations into getting them to hire you to represent them to buy or sell house and of course the job. We covered that before, but again, you need to have a thick skin to be able to go and do all of those steps, get to the finish line over and over again, and then just get knocked back down. You gotta get up. And most people don't. They freak out, they say they're gonna quit, and it would go back to the other job, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But the point of this video is to talk about if being a real estate agent is for you. If there's something that sounds like something you would do, then it's best that you don't even waste your time. I don't say all these things to try to scare people away. I say because of the opposite, because I care about you. I care about you, your family, your kids, and I don't want you to go and make horrible decisions that's just going to affect them negatively. Put all your eggs in one basket and then just not be what you're built out to be. And then we have number four. Number four is, <laughs> I'm pausing for a minute because it's one of those things that frustrates me the most, but I also understand why people say it. I get this a lot. I'm thinking about getting my real estate license because I'm gonna do it on the side for extra cash. And this really irks me. It irks me because it's really coming from a selfish mindset of that person asking that. They are saying they are gonna enter a career where they're gonna oversee the biggest transaction of someone's lives but they're not gonna be in the business full time, paying attention to market stats, working on their negotiation skills, not knowing what's happening in each particular community, not knowing the changes going on with the interest rates. They're not knowing what's going on with the market. They're not staying up to date with all the latest technology and everything else that you need to be a really good professional, but they want someone to hire them to represent them in that sale. Who does that benefit? Are you really the best person for the job if you're just doing it for extra cash? If you were honest with yourself, the answer is no, you're not. So in good faith, how can you go out and represent someone if you are not truly the best person for the job. Now, I'm not saying people who say this are selfish. They probably haven't even thought that far into it, and I get it. Maybe that's the point of me putting this out there. But I think it's very important that if you're going to enter this industry, treat it with respect and as a career because that's what your clients deserve. They deserve a full-time professional. Now, I'm not saying that as you're getting into the career that you shouldn't have some other means of supplementing your income until you get on your feet. I'm not saying that at all. For many years, I was a bartender at night. I was a bartender at night when I was a realtor during the day. But what I would say is I wasn't doing real estate on the side, I was bartending on the side. That's why I picked a job at night, I did real estate during the day, and then what I did was I saved up six months of income, I quit the bar gig and went in real estate full time, burned all the bridges, and I never looked back. That's really what you have to do in order to be successful. You have to get to a place, burn your bridges. Another point at all that is by saying that you're gonna do it on the side, it's just really conveying the lack of confidence you have in yourself to order to do this full time. And if you don't think you can do it full time, why do you think you can do it part time? It's hard enough to win it full time. So with that said, I will end that point. And those are four 
really good, I think, conversation pieces that I like to have with people when they ask me if they should become a real estate agent or not. So if you're thinking about being one, well, listen, I have links in the description of this where you can take real estate school online. I also have my training, which is designed through those three phases I mentioned before, how to grow your business. You can see that at suitupagents.com or click on the link in the description. Or of course, you can always call or text me anytime. As long as I'm not too busy or I'm not with other projects or I'm not with my family, I, I do have five children. If I'm not doing some of those things, I would love to have a conversation with you and maybe guide you into the right steps of moving forward. With that, I hope you guys have a good one and I'll see you on the next video.